Hi everyone, it's Ben here from Sydney Fruit Gardening. I thought I'd do another video uh, to give you a bit of an update for early spring. In front of me is my Suriname cherry. Uh, so this one is absolutely loving this wet weather as they all are at the moment. Uh, we've had a few storms up in Sydney, but you can see all the nice new, really luscious red growth on it there. Now it has recently flowered, a couple of different flowers there. I don't know if they'll form fruit, but um, I think I'd be lucky uh, to get fruit straight away. <laughs> um, but uh, let's uh, wait and see. Hopefully, I do. Um, the apples are all starting to come out, and as I've explained before, I've got different uh, early, mid, or late um, fruiting varieties all grafted on the same trees. So I've already got. You know, apples up here behind the mesh bag. I think you can see these are all Dorset Golden apples, which are already forming. And then on the same tree, you know, fruit buds for, um, or flowers for the Fuji, uh, winter banana, um, you know, and over here we've already had flowers for Kirk's seedling. Uh, and Carrington, both Kirk Seedling and Carrington are varieties which I found searching through some of the old newspapers on Trove that were sold in Sydney, both early varieties back in the early 1900s. So I thought um, they might be well adapted to our local conditions. All right, the fig's doing all right there. Um, here a selection of some of my greenhouse tropicals. They've been out for a little while now. Uh, sour sop, not much movement since the last video, but still, you know, got that nice growth starting to come through. Uh, Canistel's doing all right. Have a year, listen, it had a couple of leaves knocked off in the storm the other night, but doing okay. Miracle berry, doing all right. The little flower bud that was on it got knocked off in the storm the other night, but it wasn't doing anything anyway, I don't think. Uh, peanut butter tree, not much to report there, doing okay. This sour sop still, still no movement here. It's still green underneath, but we'll see if it shoots. Supper deers, some nice growth starting to come on that one there. Uh, Patanga tuba, yeah, doing all right. Uh, some nice growth here on the dwarf groomy charmer. So, um, yeah, a bit of action there, which is good. Now, I have been busy over here. I actually moved these garden beds that were that were here. This, this wall's all north-facing, by the way. So it gets, you know, sun coming um, pretty much all day. I moved them back here closer to the house. Because, you know, when we come out and we need herbs or veggies, it's easy just to go here. Um, plus, it frees up a spot down here for some trees. To go along this nice north fencing um, uh, fence line so it's also got a bit of protection above here from the neighbor's tree um, I'm thinking of doing a little bit of an experiment here um, so still using the espalier growing style but applying it to more tropical plants so the relinia this one's already got some nice lateral growth which would be suitable for espalier Maybe even the jackfruit. I have seen, I've done a little bit of research online and people have espaliered both of these trees successfully and it, it manages to keep them small whilst also getting quite a lot of fruit. So it just helps getting, you know, more fruit in, you know, per square meter into the garden and um, not taking up too much space. So stay tuned, I'll um, let you know when, uh, when I've actually um, set this up. All right, well, raspberries are going nuts. They're already starting to take off. Um, this tamarillo hasn't stopped growing at all. <laughs> you know, over winter, it just kept on powering along and you know, fantastic growth, nice red growth at the top there. Um, yeah, just an, an, such an easy plant to grow. Quine uh, muck. Or climb mook. It's doing okay. I mean, you know, potentially a little bit of new growth up the top there. 
Not much to report with that one. Still not sure where I'll put that. I was thinking of putting it against the shed here, but there's already a lot going on in this little space. I moved the pineapple in ground next to the banana here. This is a, uh, I don't know what I'll do with this banana. I put it in on the 18th of August. Um, I got it through the post. Actually sent up from Melbourne though, so it had endured a Melbourne winter. Um, and then it came up here and I put it into the ground and um, it has not done well at all. Um, it just seems to be dying on me. Um, you know, plenty of water. Um, honestly, I don't know what the issue is. People tell me it'll just bounce back in, in uh, you know, as the winter warms up later in spring. But um, if you've got ideas of what to do, please let me know in the comments. Um, Relinia, in-ground Relinia is doing okay. There's lots of new growth, but it does keep getting... One of the annoying habits with Relinia, I find, is that once a branch decides it's going to die back, it dies all the way back progressively to the join um, of the, um, the, the tree. And you can see it, it's starting to do it to this one here, if I can get this thing to focus. You know, it's really, really frustrating. Um, so I think there may still be a bit more dieback left on this, but hopefully once the weather warms up, it'll get going. It's got a nice, you know, nice thick trunk. There's growth coming off it down here. Um, but you know, I really want this to be a nice, strong, sturdy tree that can support some nice Rolinia fruit. Yeah, so Panama Berry is still looking a bit haggard, um, but there is new growth coming on all up the, the tree. You can see on the, the branches there. Just go up a bit further, there's some up here. Up to the top here. Anyway, you can see yeah, there's a bit of new growth on it, and I think I think it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, so hopefully we'll get some Panama berries. Now I can get some seeds, and I can plant some little seedlings to get some backup trees, because this guy's going to be a, not an easy one to keep alive, I think, during winter. Uh, this jackfruit, main ground jackfruit, is doing good. It's starting to shoot new growth now. So, yeah, certainly a bit of winter damage there, but nothing it couldn't handle. Uh, black sapote looking good with you know, all the rain. Um, trying to start to shoot out some new growth now. This is the Bernica variety. Um, it's still got two black sapotes on there. We have eight. Um, I've got one inside and we've eaten three. So um, they kind of get to about that size. This is the first year we've had them, but they're kind of egg shaped, um, but a little bit bigger than a billiard ball at this stage. Here's one over here that's not in the mesh bag I can show you. It's not bad, you know. Um, there's certainly a bit of, um, yeah, there's enough flesh in there to enjoy it and I find this variety, it does have a little bit of sweetness to it where some of them can be a bit bland. Um, uh, and um, yeah, there's about six to eight seeds we had in these, smaller than normally. I'm trying to germinate those um, to get some more little trees. Another one of my potted relinias. Again, lots of lots of growth on this one, and this one didn't have as much dieback. There's a scale there. Um, you had a little bit of dieback, you can see, but overall, pretty good, and and. You know, this one really branched out quite low. Sometimes the trees that are lower, I find, to the ground don't get as much um, 
die back. So yeah, that one's done all right. And now my achacha. Yeah, this one, you know, I think I've mentioned before, I did have some issues where when I planted it out from the pot, you know, I got some dieback and leaf loss. And it was around September of 2020. And, and I'm finding again in the September we just had, I got some dieback again. Um, so I don't know, you know, if it's something that I need to be concerned about, you know, up the top of the tree is, unfortunately that's dead. But down here, I've already tested this bit. This is alive. Um, um, but this, this tree used to go up another foot or so. Um, it is in, unfortunately, we do have a bit of clay soil here. Um, I raised it up a little bit when I planted it, but that, that subsided. Um, they absolutely hate root disturbance, so I'm not sure if I'll... Um, I'll see how it goes this season, I think, and... Um, you know, if I still have these issues, maybe I'll, I'll think about raising it up even higher. Um, as much as I don't want to disturb, you know, the roots, um, that might be what I have to do just to protect the tree in the long run. But um, if anybody out there has any thoughts, let me know. Um, um, but I think I'll just see how it goes um, this season. There's no real new growth yet. There's little bits which are trying to start. Um, you know, you probably can't see that very well. There you go. Little bits like that. Um, so there's green shoots, but um, yeah, not yet big enough to tell if they're leaves or flowers. I've had this probably nine years now, so I'd, I, I would desperately love some fruit from it. <laughs> um, and I've huddled all, all these guys together because we had some wild storms and they were just falling over but you know there's black sapotes in there there's a couple of coffee trees and um, my wort's avocado um, I'm hoping that I get some fruit from this guy later on but um, I have heard that they're not the not necessarily the best avocado tree so maybe I'll I'll graft some other varieties on although that might be climatic depending on where you grow it but I think some people have challenges with this tree, so let me know if you're successful with it. I'd love to love to know. Right, I'll go over here for a bit. I've been doing lots of grafting on the lemon lime. Um, none have taken so far. Citrus grafting is a lot harder than apples, um, but if any do, I will show you. Um, this and the lemon myrtle lost all its leaves because of some accidental spraying off spray from um the citrus tree i was spraying for um um bugs and funguses and whatnot so i think the lemon myrtle hated that but it's coming back now um what else is here little scarlet jabotti carpus shooting out again some other sabara varieties or grimmel i'm not sure they're doing all right curry trees shooting oh, finger lime I just noticed this the other day but I've actually got a few finger limes coming along down the bottom here how cool is that um, so there's some smaller ones as you go up the tree but those oh there's some over here too awesome oh that's excellent really looking forward to having these they're such cool unique fruits All right. Uh, this was my Vitrantha costata, Jabotti Carver. Again, it lost all its leaves during winter. So I think there's some signs it may be trying to regrow up here. But we'll see. Anyway, it's still green. It's still green, but. Um, yeah, hopefully as the weather warms up, it'll start shooting again. Okay, let's go over here. I've been busy grafting apple trees, as you can see. Um, all right, white sapote seedlings, doing great. I hope to find some signwood and graft onto these at some point. 
they can't seem to get any from dailies because everyone's buying them out and they're, they're already gone by the time um, they're put up onto the site. Um, Achacha seedlings, lychee seedlings doing really well. This one in particular, it just shows the variability, right? Like we've got three here. This one, you know, obviously suffered during winter. This one, I'm sure you're not looking that great, but it's doing okay. And then you got this one that's just thriving over here. So sometimes you get a bit of variability with your seedlings. All right. All right, so the Irwin mango, little mango starting to form. But I think this tree has had a bit of a hit of anthracnose. Um, a bit of a mango disease up here, fungal. Kind of thing. Uh, I've given it a spray of Monka Zeb this morning, so with all the wet weather though it's hard to control. So many flowers for such a little tree. Alright. Uh, pomegranate. Wonderful variety. Got lots of um, green growth. Not that many flowers, but I tend to find the flowers are very progressive. Um, there'll be a few early ones, but then there'll be a lot more coming later. You can see you know, small ones forming up here. At the same time as you've got ones that are already open, like this one over here. Uh, Pitanguinia, really not doing anything. It's a very slow grower, this, this particular one. Now this is my red chatoot mulberry. Um, guys, let me know, is this a common issue where you get the sort of fruit loss at the bottom? It had heaps on there, but then, yeah, they're just kind of falling. I've got this nice one forming here. A couple of others up the top there, but a lot of them have now fallen off. Let me know, is, is that a common issue? I've kept the water up to it. Um, yeah, not sure. Midium berry, not really doing anything. This one hasn't thrived here, but um, it's alive and I'll keep I'll keep um, trying, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, Navalina orange is doing all right. Um, this is my mini leaf royal, mini royal royal leaf uh, double grafted cherry heaps on there. First load of cherries. Hopefully they stay, although some I'm getting a little bit of fruit splitting just due to the wet weather. Um, honestly, I'd be happy with any cherries just as a first crop. So really thrilled that it's kind of working. Some of them are already starting to colour up. The net's on. We get fruit fly up here. This is still not big enough for fruit fly. I might need to get another one. But we get possums as well, so we'll at least protect against that. Uh, red flame grape. Doing all right. Um, and my Fuyu persimmon has heaps of flowers on it. They're not yet open, but I mean, this is promising, so. Yeah. So that's probably all I want to show you at this time. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already hit subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next video.